So first, I'm really excited to be part of this uh, wonderful uh, event. I'm extremely excited because when we look at it, uh, TED is an American conference, branching out and now having a satellite conference here in Israel and other places in the world. And of course, uh, we have here an interesting mixture of audience. How many in the audience are Israelis? That's, that's the first time I hear Israelis go just raise their hands with a ooh. <laughs> but never mind. How many are Israelis? <laughs> yeah, now I feel at home. How many are people who came from abroad? Okay, so there is a nice number. And of course, we have all the people watching us on the multicast around the world. So it's really, it, it blows my mind, the fact that different people from all over the world, different places, have to share, uh, share their same interests, their same passions. Uh, sometimes we have in common with them much more than we have in common with our next door neighbor. So it's really a fantastic uh, phenomena. Now, how, having said that, we all know that sometimes uh, when we meet people who come from different backgrounds, different cultures, different countries, we have those little cultural glitches. Sometimes they're very amusing, sometimes they become big problems. And uh, well, I think we all know what's the way to, uh, to solve big problems. Algaes. <laughs> well, how much were they offering for whoever drinks the mouthwash? <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm just kidding, but the, the really the best way to get over this is just to know each other a little bit better, to understand where everybody is coming from and therefore get along. So, uh, that, and that's what my talk is all about. And we'll start, of course, by introducing uh, the people who came outside of Israel to Israel. In Israel, by the way, the, the same word is used for foreigners and strangers, zarim. So we'll just refer to you all as uh, strangers, uh, just for simplicity purposes. So the chapter, the first chapter is called Shame on the Time. Shame on the Time is free translation of Chaval al Azman, which is a phrase <laughs> that brings all the essence of Israeliness into it. First, as you know, probably from the high-tech stereotype, etc., Israelis are not very big in wasting uh, time, excluding this talk right now, of course, but uh, they're very, we're very direct, very straight to the point. If we, you give us development projects, we'll do them very fast because shame on the time. <laughs> However, shame on the time can also be used to describe different things. For instance, how was that movie? So the movie was not so bad. Shame on the time, chaval azman, don't waste your time. The same uh, question, how was that movie? That can be, that's the best movie ever, Avatar. Chaval al azman, shame on the time. <laughs> so it can be good, it can be bad, but it's really what we're all about. Now, I didn't come up with these things along. I was inspired by some uh, experts on this. And one of the very big e experts really pointed out that everything in Hebrew uh, has a meaning. And that guy, of course, his name is Avshalom Kor, <laughs> or which in English means uh, Father Peace Cold. And uh, Father Peace Gold, no seriously, he's bigger than Michael Jackson. He had, uh, <laughs> even before, he had uh, a show in Israeli TV, he would get almost 100% rating. Seriously, 70 is a, maybe the fact that we only had one channel when I was growing up contributed to that rating, but still, everybody knows him. And he explained that everything in the language, and language, of course, is a cornerstone of culture, everything in the Hebrew language has meaning. So, for instance, my name, Oded Vardi, means encouraged my rose. The organizer that, <laughs> that we just met, Maya El Khalal is Maya God Space. Liat Aronson, listen carefully, you to me, son of Aaron. <laughs> and Professor Shimon Shoken here means Professor Simon. I don't know what the hell Shoken is, but it has to mean something. And uh, if we speak about meaning, it's not ju just about the free translation as we've seen in one of the previous presentations. It's really also about understanding the subtext. Now, I've heard from many people coming to Israel that they were very impressed, etc. but Israelis maybe were aggressive, maybe they were a little bit uh, vulgar. And we're not, I mean, don't believe what you see on CNN. We're really a very warm and loving people. It's just the way we talk, the way we communicate. So, for instance, if you stand in a line and Israeli comes to you and say, move, it really means, would you move a little, please? I mean, shame on the time, there's no, we're not rude, this is just how we talk. Now, of course, a lot of us uh, have been walking around the world, exposed to the world, we know that we need to be a little bit more polite. So if somebody says, would you move a little? That's really as if they say, could you be so kind and please clear some way, thank you very much, I appreciate it. I love you, fascinating. Just everything you'll see in America. And if somebody Israeli goes out of his way to be nice and says, 
please move. Well, as you know, Israelis don't say please, that's right. <laughs> now, the shame of, on the time mentality is beyond the language. You need to, to understand what drives us. So the very first drive is that we don't want to be the sucker, not to be a friar. So I'll give you an example. If you drive in a street, there are two lanes. Somebody in the right lane stops and either picking up or dro dropping off a passenger and he stops. It's perfectly okay there if you're behind him. It's perfectly okay to go and create your own second line because otherwise you'll be stuck behind him. You'll be a flyer and everybody else will uh, pass you from the left lane. So it's not that we drive or park <laughs> like crazies. These are just things that are completely acceptable uh, in Israel. And in general, lines, lanes, it's all general recommendations. It's uh, pretty much for a little bit orientation. Then you go, if you don't uh, push in the line, as you've seen for the drinks here, you didn't get a drink. It's not because we're rude, it's because you're a flyer. <laughs> so, now last thing, you might have seen a little bit about body language, which also shows a lot about culture. Uh, as you can see about me and a lot of other Israelis, we talk a lot with our hands. We're not going to slap you. But it's just Hebrew, really. Hebrew has about 100,000 words, which is far less than any other modern uh, language. So sometimes when we don't know exactly how to say, we overcompensate with our hands. <laughs> like this anecdote of the guy who's walking with two watermelon under his hands in the street. Another guy comes to him and asks him, excuse me, how do I get to Dizengoff Street from here? So the guy tells him, okay, can you hold these for a second? I have no idea. <laughs> And last, maybe, thing that you need to know about us, that we learned English from TV. So on one hand, everybody here in Israel can converse in English. I'm sure you noticed this. On, on the other hand, uh, we might have picked some uh, words from English, like television, telephone, even the F word uh, is part of the Hebrew language these days. Of course, sometimes the word has the original uh, meaning, like television, sometimes like the F word, it's used differently. So for instance, in, the, in our military, uh, if somebody, let's say, is not very good with times, he has a bug, so to speak, like software bug, but he has a bug in the personality. So uh, in Hebrew, we would say he has a fuck in the timetables. I'm not talking uh, dirty here, I'm just saying what fuck in Hebrew means, which is like bug in software. <laughs> no, seriously, it's not just me. I mean, even the prime minister, if uh, the secret his secretary is printing a letter and something's wrong with the printing, she would go to the prime minister, maybe even to the chief rabbi, and they say, we have a fuck in the printing. <laughs> So we're not, we're, not, we're not rude, it's just really how we are. We don't want to hit you, we don't want to boss you around and say, move, move. Uh. And when we say if we have a slip of that uh, F word, I'm not going to say fuck again because uh, somebody will be <laughs> mad at me. But if, if we say so, it's not us and move our hands, it's not craziness, this is how we are. So now after we've shown uh, the strangers a little bit about Israel, and maybe we show Israelis a little bit how we are perceived in the world, uh, Go to chapter two, let's do lunch. And that's introducing is, uh, America to Israelis or letting Americans know how we perceive them. So uh, I started first thinking a bit, one of my first business trips abroad, maybe 14 years ago, I met this uh, company that was very important for me to meet. We had a meeting. At the end of the meeting, the guy that I met told me, your product is very interesting. Uh, call me next time you're in town, walk me to the door. Good meeting, good meeting, shook hands. Uh, and of course, he asked me to call him next time, I was, uh, next time I was in town. So I called him next time, didn't get back to me. Sent him an email, no reply. Called the secretary. She didn't really know what I was talking about. At that point, I figured out that I can get a hint. Then I figured that Americans, since they don't want to offend everybody, they're not as direct in Israelis, his way uh, uh, to let me know that he's not interested in, uh, interested in the dialogue was to say, call me next time in town and said, send me a white paper or uh, other uh, things with concrete action items. So just so now we know Israelis how to translate it. Here are a few quick rules. So when American calls, call me next time you're in town, really means I'm getting a restraining order. <laughs> when American says good meeting, really means we've met. <laughs> when American says very interesting, how many in the audience here have interesting products? <laughs> Some people still raise their hands. It really means not interesting. And mostly in financial institutions, when they say, I'll consult with my partners, is about where to have uh, lunch. <laughs> now, speaking of lunch, when American says, let's do lunch, really means the last thing I want to have in front of me when I eat <laughs> is you. <laughs> and just a few quick ones to close the translation chapter. When American says yes, they really mean maybe. When American says maybe, 
they really mean no. And when Americans say no, Americans don't say no. <laughs> now, this is all part really, I mean, we can joke about it as much as we want, but it's all really part of a cultural uh, thing there, that America is all about, you know, the system will work better if everybody would be nice, no collisions, no confrontations, etc. That's the era of the politically correct. And the biggest uh, symbol of this era is that for the first time in American history, the president is a black man. Oh my God, did I just say black? I mean African-American. There are no more black people in America. Black is a bad word. You're not supposed to say black anymore. Same as Indians. There are no more Indians in America. There are only Indians in India and they do technical support. But no more India. Thank you. But in America, there are no more Indians. They, ha they are Native Americans. So the guy in the, and by the way, also in the Indian language, like in Hebrew, everything has a, me a meaning, just like um, Father Peace Cold, say, of Shalom Ko. So this guy here, when he was an Indian bonding with nature, his name was Chief Walk with Bear. Now he owns a casino and his name is Chief Executive Officer. <laughs> So a quick uh, guy just for uh, Israelis who travel abroad to know what to say, not, not to say black is African American, don't say black. Indian is Native American. If I eat a lot, I won't become fat. That's comforting, I'll become overweight. And a very bad word I learned recently, don't you ever, 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 ever say that, it's very offensive, it's woman. Because uh, if there's a board of directors and it's led by a man, what's, what would be his title? Chairman. Chairman, that's right. And if it's a woman? Chairperson, not woman, person. If it, the uh, sales are led by a man, it will be? And if it's a woman? Salesperson, exactly. So woman, very bad word. <laughs> Don't you ever say it. Today, women are called persons. And... Thank you. And just to show that we get it and we are all part of the connected world together here in TED from America, from Israel, from all over the world, I would like to close the presentation with a tribute to politically correctness and just so we, you all see in Americans that we're not a group of barbarian people who talk with their hands and speak only in imperative. Uh, here's a gesture for the politically correct era from us in Israel. Thank you very much.